have an auction coming up in New York, the Gemini sale. Can mm -hmm. you tell us about this auction? Well, this is the 10th year, this is our 50th year in business, and this is our 10th year of doing Gemini sales. Uh, we're having it at the New York International, where I was one of the founding members about 40 years ago when the show started, and it uh, developed into an auction venue, and is the most important auction venue in the United, in the world, for ancient coins, because all of the most important dealers come together and hold auctions all week, in addition to a first-rate coin show at the Waldorf. And what are some of the highlights that will be in the sale? Well, one of the most important coins is on our cover, and it's an unassuming little coin, Jewish coin, with a menorah on it. Now, this was issued by the last of the Maccabees in 37 BCE, and you weren't supposed to put menorahs or showbread tables on coins because it's like you're reproducing the most important portions of the Jewish religion. But this fellow did it anyway. He lost the war soon, was executed, and Herod the Great came in. But of these coins, only 40 are recorded. And this is one of the finest of the 40. And in 50 years, this is the first one I've ever had. This is a completely remarkable coin. It came from a very expensive sale where almost everything was overpriced, the Prospero sale. But we bought this without any pedigree. But we found out that it was in a Munza medallion sale in 1974, which led us to the fact that it was in the Lord Bunbury sale in 1896, which then led us to the fact that it was that was owned by Catherine Perkins and sold to the Boston Museum of Fine Arts in 1902 and then published in the catalog of the Boston Museum of Fine Arts in 1955. The coin is has dies cut by Polycleides, who cut the die and he signed it twice, who who cut the dies for the Agricus Decadram. And the figure on the reverse is taken from the sculpture on the Parthenon where the woman is putting on her sandal. So this is a highly important coin that got completely mixed in a very, very large and well-publicized auction. This is a Doronis dodecadram uh, from Macedonian tribal coinage from 480 BC. These people were conquered by the Persians and they struck these large coins so they wouldn't have to make so many coins to pay tribute to the Persians. Now, this is the only one I've ever seen with mint luster, and the reverse is very interesting because it has these large holes. These are actually gas bubbles and prove that when these planchets were made, that's what they used to strike the coin on, they poured molten metal on a hot, smooth surface the metal was still bubbling, so we have these gas bubbles. And then they struck the coin. So we, the coin is in mint condition, but we know all about the minting process from the gas bubbles. And it's uh, among the largest of Greek coins. This is a coin that shows the Colosseum. The Colosseum is very, very interesting because it was built on the site of Nero's Golden House which was only for Nero. When Vespasian and Titus won the, first, won the first revolt against the Jews, they took all of the gold from the temple and used the gold from the temple to build the Colosseum. On the site, and it shows Titus seated on the reverse, looks a little ugly, uh, Titus seated on the reverse. So you had the site of the Golden Palace of Nero, which was made only for him, and on that site was built the Colosseum, which was for all the people. Now, it's just recently been discovered that there's a Victory Quadriga and a palm tree with a Jewess in one of the porticos of the Colosseum coins, making it another Judea Capta coin, which was not known. There are only about 50 or 60 of these, 
and this particular one, though it's worn, is from the Royal Dutch Collection. These are Aegean staters. The Aegean stater was really the first recognized world trade coin, and they were a sea power. So when they were a sea power, they used the sea turtle on their coins. They then had some strong reversals and were no longer sea power, so they put a land tortoise on their coins. Now, after, after this, then the Athenians took over and the coins of Athens became the largest world trade coin until they were replaced by the coins of Alexander the Great as international currency. But these coins of Aegina were the first internationally known and traded world currency.